What's going on? So uh, today we got an unboxing video of the brand new Kendon Scorpion motorcycle dolly. Um, going to get it unboxed, give you my opinions on the dolly after I use it for a little bit. Um, but most importantly, we're going to show you how to get it put together and basically see how it looks with the 2022 Lowrider ST on it. Just to be transparent, this dolly was provided to me by Kendon to do this unboxing, assembly, um, and review video on. Um, however, there's no restrictions, so I'm going to be giving you my honest opinion on this dolly. All right, let's get into it. All right, I want to give this snapping thing a try, so let's see how it works out. All right, so we got it all unboxed. Um, everything's pretty much going to be already assembled for you for the most part. Uh, this section of the dolly is going to have the casker wheels on it already, as well as the ramp already installed, which is on the back. Um, you're going to have two, two wheels that are going to go on the front portion that you do have to install. Um, but you have the wheel chalk portion there and that part that has to be assembled as well onto the dolly. Uh, so we're going to get that all taken care of now. Uh, instructions are right there as well. It tells you everything that you'll need. All right. So uh, Kendon actually provides you with a QR code. Um, you can actually scan that if you want or go to their YouTube channel. It shows you how to basically assemble the lift as well. Um, but for this... What we're gonna need for assembly is gonna be a strapping cutter or wire cutters. You're gonna need a utility knife or a box cutter, two half inch and nine sixteenth combination wrenches, uh, three sixteenths hex key or T handle, three quarter inch socket and a three quarter inch wrench or a combination wrench. Um, so this is all the parts that you should also have included inside. And now we're going to get to taking all of this stuff off and getting it put together for you. And there you go. Simple as that. Now, uh, one thing you guys may have noticed is these uh, locking caster wheels. Um, basically, they're foot operated, which is nice. So you don't have to necessarily bend over to unlock any of these things. Um, to lock them, you just simply step down on it, locks it into place. And obviously when there's weight on it, it's gonna be a little bit more resistance, but you can just use the front of your foot pop that up unlock it and you're able to move it around again so that's a nice little neat little feature they added to make it uh easier to lock and unlock now uh one thing i'm noticing right away is that this is definitely a solid solid lift um looking at it on the photos and the videos at first um i thought the base over here looked kind of flimsy a little bit um but it, this thing is not going anywhere. It's a solid piece of metal over here. So um, nice job by Kendon on putting this lift together. Now we're gonna basically get it assembled. I'm gonna start by putting the wheels on the front portion and then we'll get the, um, the wheel chalk all situated. Um, something neat about this lift that is definitely worth mentioning is the wheel chalk is actually removable on this. Um, so what you can do with that, if you have a trailer or something like that, and you want a temporary install, you can actually remove that wheel chalk, install it on your trailer and you can transport it that way. Um, and then you can take these pieces of the rest of the dolly apart and put that somewhere if you need it for wherever you're going. Um, so that's a nice little feature that this dolly offers that I don't believe, uh, any competitors offer at this time. All right. So we're going to be getting the wheel chalk assembled first uh, this is where you're going to use a 9 16 ratchet 
as well as our wrench. We're gonna get that bolt off that's right here so that we can put the uh, front portion on. All right, so next we're gonna be taking off the front middle bolt so we can assemble the wheel chalk. For that one, you're gonna be using the half inch socket in the 3 16 Allen. If you have a T-handle, that would work, or you could just jerry-rig something like I just did here. All right, so now with that off, we're just gonna take this piece. Uh, you're gonna have three holes, pretty much just gonna set it in place. Loosely put the bolts back in, starting with this back nut, and then you'll put the bar in over here. Again, it's going to go bolt, washer, on this side it's going to be washer, and then the nut. And now that that's in place, uh, we're just going to tighten it up. Now you don't want to over tighten because the metal will bend. So if you notice it bending, just back off um, on it kind of like I did. So now we're going to add this piece in, again, taking out this bar as well. Now that that's out, I'm actually going to leave it out. I'm going to wait until I can get the bike onto the dolly to kind of figure out where the wheel placement is and to find the best spot to locate this. So for now, we're just going to put these parts aside and we're going to get the caster wheels installed. All right, so for this part, this is where the three quarter inch ratchet is going to help out and the three quarter inch wrench as well. This will go under the wheel just to keep the base from spinning. We're just going to loosely put these on right now, and then we'll tighten it down once they're on. Just keep it from moving. I'm just going to lock these casters in place, and I'm going to get these snugged down. in place once you unlock them the casters also spin too so nice little feature there that's pretty cool all right so this is a two-piece dolly um, basically what connects the two pieces together are going to be uh, these pieces right here it's going to be this pin you're going to insert them into the dolly at that location and on that location. Um, so with that said, there is gonna be a little flex in the dolly when you're riding your bike onto it, um, but this is what makes it easily pulled apart and to be stored nicely. Um, just gives you some space saving so you don't always have to have this huge thing on your garage floor if you don't need it there. And again, if you travel, it'll make it easy to tear it apart and store it in your trailer as well. So now we're just gonna put these uh, clips together.
So just the way that I did it is I did it with the bars facing up. Uh, it's not going to cause any issues with hitting anything on the bike anyway, so should be no problem. But pretty much that is going to be the lift assembled, except for the piece that's going to go behind the wheel. Uh, we're going to get the bike ridden up on it now and put that in place. All right, so let's try to ride the bike on to the dolly. So the last setting is definitely going to be the best setting for this. Um, specifically, if you have a low rider ST, and I'm going to have to go ahead and say it's probably going to be the exact same thing if you have a touring bike as well. But now we're going to go ahead and move it around and see how easy it is to move around. Alright, so just to touch on it real quick, at the front of the dolly, you'll see these little holes. Those are actually going to be the tie-down mounting points. Um, I do have a floor over here, so it is a little bit difficult to rotate the bike around um, when it gets caught up. And also, something worth mentioning is that the ramp that's on the back of this dolly doesn't seem to have a lot of tension on it. Um, so unfortunately, what happens is when you try to put it up it just falls back down to the ground so i don't know if that's an issue with all of them um or if there's an issue with this i'll reach out to kendon and we'll add in the description below what i uh hear from them but now i'm just going to go ahead and show you guys uh rotating it I mean, as you can see, it rotates nicely. There's not any issues with stability on it, really. Um, but let me show you what I was talking about with the ramp itself. So if you lift it up, it won't stay in the up position. I just don't think there's a lot of tension on these hinges to keep it up. So if you need it down, you might have to get like a small bungee and extend it to have it catch on to something. But I mean, for what it is, it works pretty good. So uh, with this dolly, because it does move when you ride the bike onto it, um, and the wheels are plastic, you will end up getting some marring and uh, some transfer onto your concrete floors if that's what you have. Because when you do ride the bike on again, the dolly does tend to shift forward a little bit. Now this is, is a pre-production unit, so I don't know if this will be an issue with the production units. 
um, but just wanted to give you guys a heads up. All right, so I've been using the uh, Kendon Dolly for probably about a month or so now. I just wanted to come back to you guys and let you know that, you know, for a Dolly, it has been holding up, doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, it does hold the bike on it pretty well. I have not strapped it down whatsoever. Um, some things that I have found, again, there is some play in that middle section, uh, which you saw in the previous video. Um, it is normal for that because it is a two-piece design. Um, so as you ride the bike onto it, it will kind of lift up a little bit. Um, something that I have noticed through the usage. Um, me personally, I'm not able to just push the bike onto it. Personally, I don't feel comfortable with it, specifically just because uh, those pieces are kind of in the way. So when you're pushing the bike up, it might be easy to get caught up on that and trip. Um, therefore, having the bike fall. So I just, I always ride the bike onto the dolly. Um, when you do get onto it, I'm not sure if it's because the front section lifts up a little bit or whatnot. Um, but as you can see on my concrete floor, um, because of the forward movement with the wheels being locked, um, it does kind of wear at the wheels. Uh, this is a pre-production unit, so I don't know if the production unit will do this or not. I haven't gotten clarification on that. Um, but just something to keep in mind that if you do have a garage floor that is finished, you may run into issues with some of that marring. Um, if you have a concrete garage floor like I do, you definitely are going to run into that issue. Um, but again, uh, some things, again, it's a pre-production unit, so I did have some chipping on the powder coating uh, when I received it. And because the coating has worn off, there is a little bit of surface rust going on. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a big issue. Um, and again, you ride it on here. There, it is a pretty thin piece of metal over there. So, I mean, you can move the bike while it's on it. Um, but like I said, it, it is pretty stable. I do that all the time. Haven't had any issues with it. Still holds the bike upright. Um, so overall, if you're looking at an option for a dolly, uh, this is definitely one on the market that I would recommend. Um, just knowing all of these things. I do have a 19 inch wheel on the front of the bike, which as you can see, it's pretty much maxed out. So if you have anything that's bigger than this, it might be a little bit of a tight fit. Um, and the bike itself is pretty much almost at the end of the ramp. That ramp will not stay up on its own unless I use a bungee cord to hold it up. But other than that, overall, uh, it's been a great, great dolly thus far. I will see if I can get a long-term review for you guys. And uh, just like, comment if you have any questions, and please subscribe. I'm going to try to get some more stuff coming in for you guys. Thank you very much.